All right, we'll do it. Goblin Slayer recap. Every time I mention Goblin Slayer, I get people upset at me on Twitter saying, Ah, oh, Goblin Slayer, that's the show about about the dude now with, with the sexual assault. Bro, Goblin Slayer is actually kind of great. Uh, and I watched the original Goblin Slayer years ago when it came out, and I actually liked it. Uh, it's about an incredibly meticulous man that likes exterminating a race of, of, of that, that, they, that he doesn't like. It's the ultimate racist, and I respect him so much for all of that. And I love getting canceled for shit that I say that I don't mean, that everyone knows I don't mean it, but I say it, and uh, they hate me anyway, so. A young priestess is seen talking to the guild attendant. She informs yes, the attendant that she would like to become an adventurer, and the attendant gives her a tag which denotes that she's a porcelain rank, which is the lowest rank for a beginner. What a low rank, rank woman, am I right? Bro, I prefer my women S rank. This is an E rank woman at best. Thank you for ranking women for me. At that moment, a group of rookies walk over to the priestess and the attendant, and they ask her to join their party. They inf This'll end very, very well. For those of you that are not familiar with Goblin Slayer, let me actually do a trigger warning. Trigger warning. You will get triggered if you get triggered. Warn her that they plan on and taking- I love how generic they are. When I watched this episode for the first time, I'm like, bro, why are all these characters so generic? Well, you will soon see. A quest to kill goblins and the attendant sub- Goblin these nuts! ...that they take up another quest that's fitting for beginners, but they refuse as a young boy who happens to be a swordsman and their leader tells her that he has chased off some goblins that appeared in his village and it'll be easy work for high pay. Yeah, he goblins are so easy. Bro, you just go in there, you find some goblins, low rank goblins, and you annihilate them. What bad could happen? <laughs> I play JRPGs. Further informs her that one of the members of his party is a swordswoman while the other is a sage, and they'll do perfectly fine on their own. Look how generic and perfectly fine they're gonna be. The girls ask the priestess if she's willing to join their party or not in impatience, and the priestess finally agrees. But as they turn to leave, the guild attendant stares at them in worry. The kids head straight for Goblin's cave. I, why are they allowed to do this? They, there should have been like actual protocols in place not to send noobs into this shit. Like how? And a young boy who appears to be the leader informs the young priestess that they couldn't purchase any potions or weapons because they didn't have enough money to procure. That seems like a terrible idea. Oh no. Oh, no. One. The young priestess gets scared about this and asks if they were not overstepping their boundaries, but the other three laugh at her while implying that she's a fraidy cat. You right at that chicken. moment, some goblins- You don't want to get raped by goblins and be forced to birth their young? <laughs> what a fucking pussy. ...attack their party and the sage uses his spell to engulf one in flames, but she is pinned down by the other goblins who try to have their way with her. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm just telling you again, trigger warning, this is a very gory show. The young priestess rushes to her defense and sends some scurrying with her holy staff while the boy charges at them fearlessly. He swings his sword dangerously, but the goblins soon prove to be too much for him. Oh, the boy God. launches an attack on one of the goblins, but the goblin pushes a knife through his midsection. And ladies and gentlemen, you are about to see small children getting brutally murdered and worse. The swordswoman realizes that the battle is almost lost and attempts to protect the other two females by asking them to run away. Which is very wholesome of her. Bye. But she is soon overpowered by the goblins who assault her sexually while beating her. The Holy shit! Man really described that very well. Uh, rest and massacre, homies. Uh, I, I love that this is actually how the show starts. I know a lot of people hate that this is how the show starts. That uh, the show starts with a bunch of underwhelming and underpowered adventures enter down a hole to meet these goblins which are low level creatures generally speaking but this happens I, I love that this show one of my favorite aspects of fantasy is delving into an incredibly common fantasy trope but exploring it in all of its misery and that is exactly what goblin slayer does the young priestess breaks down in tears and apologizes also they didn't mention that one of the reasons why they lost is because they're in a cave these people were not equipped to fight goblins right now these guys jumped into a cave with long swords and you cannot swing long swords properly in a cave goblins as a one-on-one -on -one, or even as a 5v1 aren't necessarily a huge threat rises to the swordswoman repeatedly before running off at the sage but they're unable to make it too far before the goblins catch up to them oh, the God. priestess is attacked with an arrow and numerous goblins make their way with the sage before staring at the priestess oh no with nothing why would you describe it that way but just when all hope seemed lost for the young priestess it is time for the goblin slayer to goblin these nuts. A shadow emerges from the darker side of the cave and gets the savage goblin. It's goblin damned off her. He introduces himself to her as the goblin slayer. So I love this because this introduction is cool. You see the actual disgusting reality that is the life of goblins before introducing the goblin slayer, the doom guy of this verse. Guts, if guts was up against little people. <laughs> 
sounded so wrong. But I actually love this introduction. This is the top G. This is everything Andrew Tate thinks he is. Aaron Sue discovers that she's a young adventurer. He dismembers the goblins with a few slashes of his knife before turning right? to- Right, and you see he's using a knife and a short shield, right? Because he's actually trained into freaking fighting goblins. A young sage who was not just bleeding from all the assaults, but had also been poisoned. The sage begs him to kill her, but the young priestess begs him to save her. She reveals that she can heal her with one of her three miracles, which was a special gift that priestesses have, but the goblin slayer informs her that it's too late before killing the sage. Bro, this man knows. He has weathered the apocalypse. He knows the actual depths of depravity that goblin life is, and how does these vermin infect the world around you. He wanted to commit a moral genocide. <laughs> oh god. Afterward, the goblin slayer runs toward the edge of the cage with the priestess and instructs her to use light magic to blind the leader of the goblins who was hanging toward them at that moment. The goblin lord falls due to the sudden impact of the light, and the goblin slayer slays him before lighting him up and sending him toward the oncoming goblins. I love that fight scene because, yes, goblin slayer is a high-level dude, but also he is meticulous as fuck. This is the Yoshikage Kira of not being a complete and utter sociopath. He, he is meticulous. He knows what he's doing. He knows their strengths and their weaknesses. And because of that, even though he was he would be weaker than other adventurers, he would be a more efficient person at dealing with goblins specifically. We're really delving into the goblin fantasy. I love that Goblin Slayer did this. It's not one of my favorite shows of all time, but it deserves the love and respect that it gets. Uh... I don't remember what happens in the later episodes. I just remember the first one very vividly because of the controversies that surrounded it because people were like, oh, sexual assault, bad. This anime must be bad. And while I do agree that sexual assault is bad, I know, hot take, but um, that doesn't make this show bad. They venture toward the other side of the cave where they discover a goblin who is trying to force himself on the swordswoman. That sucks. The goblin slayer kills it before going on to kill the baby goblins the priestess to A genocide, baby! End the bloodline! Sorry, um, that Harley Quinn episode is still in the back of my head. Hey. Later on, the priestess discovers that it's a common occurrence for rookie adventurers to go goblin slaying but never return. And, and also notice all of these goblins? All these baby goblins? Where, where did they come from? If all of the goblins in this cave were male few females who managed to escape and the crazy thing is you start to get into like the headspace of these goblins to some degree it's like that that, that is their metaphysiology that that is how they breed and how they survive get into their head and then at the same time you got to protect your own like I i'm sorry goblins i get where you're coming from but gobble on these nuts so emotionally distraught that they lived alone in temples for the rest of their lives but the young priestess was not dismayed, and she determined in her heart to follow the Goblin Slayer to the end. Later on, the and young- And that is how the Goblin Slayer captured the first member of his Pokemon harem. Priestess bought some armor to protect her during future adventures before approaching the Goblin Slayer. She reveals that she has purchased what a, a chainmail and tells him- What a cute horse of friendship, man. ...her intent to follow him on his future adventures. Later on, a farm girl is seen having a dream no! where she tells a young boy that she's going not to the, the city. We soon discover that the young boy is the younger version of the Goblin Slayer. In the dream, the farm girl asks him if she should purchase something for him in the city, but the boy flares up and tells her not to get him anything. The now boy's you start elder to understand why the goblin slayer hates goblins. Sister arrives and settles Aww. their quarrel before telling them that friends shouldn't fight. After a while, a carriage arrives and the girl leaves for the city while staring wistfully at the goblin slayer. She wakes up in a start and mourns over the fact that she had never apologized for leaving him behind. No. The farm girl dresses up and walks over to the way down where she sees the goblin slayer doing his routine. They've grown up so much. Goblin slayer is now- Dude, how boys grow up. Epic badass dude living his dream, following his fantasy, massive armor, cool badass name, goblin slayer, living the edgelord life. How girls grow Checks up. Checks around the perimeter. He studies the ground. Boobs. They didn't show the scene with her boobs spilling everywhere, but they spilled and the cuppeth runneth over. For signs of goblins' footprints and checks, if the fence had been tampered, and he's satisfied to discover that nothing is amiss. The girl chides him for this what? and tells- <laughs> She censored him! He censored him! What a fucking legend. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, ladies and gentlemen. ...him that he didn't have to do this. She got she buffed also over the years, let's just say. ...warns him that her uncle is awake and asks if she should prepare breakfast for him, and he agrees to this. Later on, the Goblin Slayer is seen sharing breakfast with the farm girl and her uncle. He makes the payment for his monthly rent, and the uncle comments on the fact that he was paying way much more money than expected. Yes, However, the Goblin on? Slayer involves him in that he had received more quests asking him to slay goblins. 
The Goblin Slayer informs him that That's he'll be returning he to the become. guild in search because of... Because of just a sad backstory, he has dedicated his life to the extermination of this vile race. ...new quests, and the farm girl offers to escort him because she plans on selling some farm produce at the market as well. Yeah! But her uncle stares at the Goblin Slayer disapprovingly Mutual as they leave for the guild. After they arrive at the guild, the farm girl hears people calling the Goblin Slayer a weirdo because he only takes a quest to kill goblins despite being a silver-ranked adventurer. I love that little plot point. This man didn't become an adventurer to become famous. He didn't become an adventurer to fucking make a name for himself or to make a lot of money. He hates goblins and he is going to dedicate his life to wiping out goblins so that little adventurers don't need to die, so that random farms and towns don't need to get pillaged and ravaged and with the women raped. He is dedicated his life to this task. It's like it's like you become a YouTuber because you love anime. And then you make videos about anime. Even though you know that you could just become the next Mr. Beast if you just simply make Mr. Beast videos. But no. You're gonna follow your dreams. It's a really random example. But that's how I relate to Goblin Slayer in my own weird way. The farm girl stares at him worriedly and waits patiently for him while he walks off in search of a quest. But she is surprised when he is joined by a young priestess. She realizes that the priestess is probably the person he And she's like, oh my god, competition! He had recently started adventuring with whom he had only recently told her about. The goblin slayer takes up three new quests to kill goblins and the young priestess offers to escort him. The goblin slayer walks up to the farm girl and informs her that he has some new quests. He also tells her that he All won't right. be back for days, but she waits patiently for him. Her uncle notices this He's and so wholesome. tells her that the goblin slayer has gone crazy since a disastrous event many years ago, and she was better off forgetting about him because his thirst for killing goblins would only- His thirst for killing goblins is even more powerful than his thirst for women, and when a man's mind is possessed by something that is not women, it's over for him. Unless he's gay. In which case his life is only beginning. <laughs> end up killing him. But the farm girl assures her uncle that he'll always come back and she also informs him that she'll wait for him no matter what. Ah, uh, get yourself someone as loyal as farm girl here. Meanwhile, the goblin slayer hunts down some goblins while shooting fiery arrows into their hideout. He lights up their hideout with See, gasoline. every different hideout, every different goblin hole, every different area has different freaking layouts and different holdouts and different strong suits and different things and he with his immense research and his incredible skill and his meticulous planning knows the best way to maximize efficiency in exterminating these goblins without risking his life i i love it i love that he dedicated his life to this craft a craft that is seen as pathetic by many and arrows and instructs the priestess to trap them inside with her magical abilities the priestess traps them inside but eventually tears up at the sight of the goblin's agony she wonders why anyone could be so ruthless to these creatures and begs the heavens to send a downpour of rain however the goblin slayer proceeds to kill the rest of the goblins with his sword <laughs> she picked the wrong job bro this dude shoots in fire and puts a barrier around it just to force them to burn to death and she feels bad so he's like, okay, you can stop the fire. And he just goes in and murders them anyway. <laughs> Fucking Giga Chad. The priestess asks why he uses such harsh methods as fire, poison, and detonation to kill the goblins. And the goblin slayer silently- Efficiency, re bitch. Recalls how goblins had attacked his village when he was a little kid. And how they had raped and killed his sister while he watched fearfully from the confines of a wardrobe. Oh, God, After they complete sucks. their mission, they leave for the guild and the guild attendant leaps to her feet at the sight of the goblin slayer as she is happy to see that he is safe. This Later man's doing God's work. All of the adventurers that are of his tier don't want to waste their time with low pay goblin shit. This man is doing the thing that he needs to do. I respect it so much. Ron the Goblin Slayer returns home and the farm girl is also excited to see that he's on her. Let's go. She asks him if she should prepare a meal for him and he agrees to this. Later on, the high elf is seen strolling through the halls of the guild. Chat, Goblin Slayer is a good show. Goblin Slayer Rule 34 is vile and I wouldn't advise telling you to look at it. Unless it's about the high elf because goddamn she 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 the waifu here high elf best girl a lot of people are like priestess or farm girl stands y'all could go suck on a doorknob high elf out here actual s tier waifu just saying i don't make the rules guild and she grabs the attention of the adventurers who wonder what she's doing at the guild she walks toward the guild attendant and tells her that she's searching for an adventurer named Orpold, but the guild attendant tells her she knows no one of that Where's name. Orpold? A dwarf steps forward and reprimands the elf for calling the person they were looking for by his elven name. 
He tells the guild attendant that the person they're looking Dude, for is a fellow guy. named Beard Cutter, but the guild attendant tells him that she doesn't know anyone by that name. A lizard man steps forward and apologizes on behalf Yo, of his companions, the elven girl. The party is forming! And the dwarf before revealing that what they meant to say was that they're looking for the goblin slayer. The goblin slayer steps into the guild at that moment and asks if someone mentioned something about goblins and the guild attendant informs the trio that the goblin slayer is the one they were looking for. She muses. Yeah, so this is how a new uh, party forms. The, any Anything that's goblin related, they're not going to go for some S tier adventure to help them. No, they would rather the B tier, meticulous as fuck, crazy bitch ass goblin slayer, the man who has so many skills dedicated to this craft. I love herself that. that the trio is a straight. Better get yourself an average who's a pro in one area than a pro that's average in all areas party since the elves and the dwarves were ancestral enemies and lizard men are a rare species. The young priestess arrives in time to hear the odd party asking for a meeting with the goblin slayer, and she attempts to follow him, but he advises her against it. The goblin slayer heads into a meeting room with the odd party, and a group of new adventurers approach the priestess yeah. and advise her to stop working with the goblin slayer, but she refuses. A sorceress walks up to the priestess Don't and tells why her- Why would you censor everything? Bro! Bro, when there's no goblins on screen, what do you think we'll be looking at? Aw, oh, man. The goblin slayer had approached her with an odd request. She further reveals that the request had involved her procuring an ancient scroll and asks why the priestess isn't joining a party where she could use her powers for killing monsters more significant than goblins. Dude, if Me I told you that, if I told you, here, if I told you that the reason why they were censoring this is because she had a legendary vagina on her chest, the last of the vagina-chested women, you would not know if I was being real or not. I'm just saying, you wouldn't know, and there would be no way to verify it with this recap. Just saying, just saying. Meanwhile, the odd party tells the goblin slayer of how they like his help with defeating the demon lord's army, but the goblin slayer tells him that he doesn't know the demon lord and he has no desire to kill anything other than goblins. I love that, right? So the overall plot here is just like every RPG, it's just like every isekai, it's like every fantasy, right? There's the demon lord and all of his minions and all these dungeons and all these fantasy creatures and all of that. And instead of focusing on the greater goal that every single other one focuses on, right? Because every fantasy always will focus on the main character eventually working his way up to defeat the actual demon lord. This show takes a really close look at the goblin side of society. And I love that. The elven girl flares up at this, but the lizard man chips in before things get complicated. He tells the goblin slayer that the major reason why they had sought him out in the first place is because they need his help they with killing a nest of goblins goblin that were attacking problem. the elven village. He further revealed that the goblins had already captured the sister of the person who sent them and the- Oh, no! Why? It's always the sister. Venturer, who had gone in search of her, had now gone missing. The odd party That's further awesome. reveals that they're also silver-ranked adventurers, and they had been instructed to aid him. The goblin slayer informs them of his decision to take up their quest, and the elven girl is surprised at how eager he is to take up the quest. He leaves the- Man is excited. He's like, oh shit, high-level goblins? I must kill, must kill, I must kill- Trio in the room. I found his calling. Guys, if you're gonna do it, do it right. That, that's the moral of this story. If you people have something you truly love and are passionate about, even if it isn't something with the highest pay, follow your dreams and become the goddamn best you can in that field. Unless that field is filling up those cum jars because I cannot stand you doing that and sending me pictures of your, uh, of your vanquishing your foes, okay? It's, it's a disaster. Keep it away from me. I don't want that in my Twitter mentions. Thank you. Roman informs the guild attendant of his new quest. The young priestess hears of this and offers to follow him, but she is joined by the odd party who reveal that they'll also be accompanying them. They travel for a while before Let camping at night, and the elven it. girl shares her traveling rations with them. The dwarf also shares his fire wine with them, and the elven girl gets red in the- Chat, let me just remind you once again. Flat is in fact justice. Uh, it's not about the size of the boobs. It's who the boobs are attached to. And high elf, my lady, you are a queen. Face after eating it, but they're all surprised when it doesn't affect the goblin slayer. The elven girl urges him to share something of his with them. Oh, oh she's so drunk. Oh, she's so drunk and cute. And, 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 and I never wanted the goblin to see her ever. She's mine. And the goblin slayer shares some cheese that had been given to him by the farm girl at home. He also tells them how his Jeez. elder sister had told him that goblins come from the moon. He further reveals that when someone goes green with envy or tries to take others' things by force, they become goblins. The Dude is just into goblins. Goblins are his life. 
Holy shit. Next day, the group leaves for the goblin's hideout, and they spot some goblins waiting by a cave, but the elven girl takes out two goblins with an arrow. After they Damn! succeed in taking out the other- Straight shooter. Goblin scouts, they venture into the cave and they encounter a device which looks like an advanced technology. The Goblin Slayer notices this and tells the others that this horde of goblins has no shaman because a shaman would not make use of shaman. Is he calling it a shaman? This isn't a Pokemon. Such advanced weapons and the presence of this technology indicates that they're being led by an intelligent being. They survey Bro, the. We need Yugi out here. I summon Soldier of Stone. Destroy the moon. <laughs> Yeah. Cave for any signs of the goblins hideout, and the dwarf detects that the goblins are located at the left side of the cave, but the goblin slayer insists that they take the other side. After they follow the right side, they venture into a room where they see the missing elven lady who had been bound against the wall. Ah! Yeah, these guys are vicious, and and I love how this show just doesn't it doesn't shy away from showing you the atrocities that these goblins are committing and why society would be better without them. Why this is like a justifiable genocide. Like it's... She tells the goblin slayer to kill and he charges toward her while the others try to restrain him but a goblin emerges behind her legs and he kills it with one blow. The others are relieved as He's they thought ready. that he intended... You're not going to catch him by surprise. He knows what these little fuckers are up to. And he knows exactly how, how these little bastards are going to twist and turn your mind to defeat you. Even though, yes, they are these low-level losers. But they'll catch you by surprise. They will outnumber you. They will destroy you. ...to kill the girl, but he tells them that he's not a savage and he had only been trying to kill the goblin. The lizardman uses his spell to summon Iguanador, a lizardman made from the bones of yes. his elders, and he orders it to take the missing girl back to the That's elven awesome. village. After Iguanador leaves, the lizardman Bye, reveals Iguanador. that he can only use his powers once more, and the young priestess reveals that she also has a limited number of time that she can use her powers. They venture deeper into the cave in search of the goblins... The goblins learned to smart the adventures. Yeah, I, I do like that this... So here's, I'm a big lore guy. I freaking love lore. And the fact that this whole show is not just delving into, like, the lore of the Goblin Slayer world, but the lore of, like, the mind of a fantasy goblin. Who they are, what they do, how they overpower you, and why they need to be eradicated and they eventually find them sleeping in a group. The goblins are awakened by their presence, but the dwarf casts a sleeping spell on them to prevent them from alerting their leader. After the goblins bro thinks they're the God -skin duo. fall asleep, the goblin slayer and the odd party kill them in their sleep and That's the elven girl it. stabs them no chances. repeatedly as she remembers how the poor girl had been raped. While they kill the goblins, no the leader chances. catches them in the act and the goblin slayer is surprised to see the strange creature. The elven girl informs him that it's an orc which happened to be one of these in Lord's generals, but the orc is angered by the goblin slayer's ignorance of his species oh, and he charges at them. Because the goblin slayer only knows goblins. Contempt. The lizardman summons Iguana- Yeah, this is very D&D. This whole show is very D&D. But that's what a lot of these fantasy stories are based off these days. Door again and he charges at the orc. But the orc fends off the lizardman's attacks and the attacks of his other companions. Oh, the orc God. demonstrates his true power by shooting at them with a gigantic fireball. Oh, I've seen enough orc goblin combos in alternative media that I don't want to see where this goes. This protects them with the It's an ogre, not an orc. Damn. Divine power of protection. After their shield wears off, the group launches an attack on the orc, but the orc sends the goblin slayer flying before thwacking the no! rest of the group. The priestess runs over to the goblin slayer's side and gives him a healing potion and a stamina potion. After the demon slayer regains his strength, he tells the others of a new plan that had just come to his mind. See, and, he and all of his time dealing with goblins, the gods are... The, oh, yeah, the opening of Goblin Slayer shows the gods rolling the dice to define fate. He charges at the... Or but I do love how he's meticulous with everything he does. He'll come up with plans and strategies. He's not the best fighter, the best adventurer, but from learning how to deal with goblins, he learns how to tackle life's problems. Orc who tries is, killing him with badass. another fireball, but the Goblin Slayer reveals an ancient scroll that he had hidden carefully and uses the ancient spell within it. Ah, yes, I also hide things in my ba in my asshole carefully, just, just in case I need it. Slice the orc in two halves. The others are surprised as he walks over to the orc and finishes it off with a deep cut. Dude, look how badass this in is. two halves. The others are surprised as he walks over to the orc. This man is just goblin slaying guts. And finishes it off God with a damn. deep cut in the forehead. The priestess realizes that it was probably the same scroll that the sorceress at the guild had told her about. After they kill the rest of the goblins, the party leaves the cave and meet a carriage waiting for them outside. An elven man asks how many more goblins Hello, are elven inside, man. but the crew walk past him wordlessly. After they step into- I have nothing to say. Dude, because this is traumatic. Again, th this isn't just quests for riches and jewels and gems. This is, this is a traumatic experience for everyone. If you embark down this path of slaying goblins, you will see some fucked up shit.
to the carriage, the males fall asleep, and the elven girl asks the young priestess if the goblin slayer had been killing so many goblins alone in the past, and the priestess confirms this. The elven girl is touched by goblin this, but she Terminator. promises herself that she would introduce the goblin slayer to a proper adventure in the future before falling asleep. Later on, the goblin Very slayer awesome. is seen inspecting the fence of the farmhouse for any signs of goblins when the farm girl walks up to him. She asks if everything is okay, and the goblin slayer informs her that there was no sign Why of would you censor it? goblins. No. She tells him that she had been no. asking about his health condition and asks him if the new group of the- are, Is everything okay? No sign of goblins. I, I meant, are you okay? Dude, it just shows you where this man's mind is. He's been so traumatized by these goblins, he doesn't even care about himself, as long as he can take down as many of those fuckers as he can. Which is such a... God. It's like, you, feel, you start to feel bad for Goblin Slayer. This man is a broken, twisted man. He doesn't even have a name anymore. He's just Goblin Slayer. Adventurers whom he had traveled with recently, but she is pleasantly surprised when he implies that he could like to work with them again. Hey, After a while, the friends. Goblin Slayer leaves for the... Ah, ah, little gobby boy is growing up so cool. ...field, and he is approached by the Lizard Man. The dwarf and the elven girl who tells Why is Lizard Man blushing like that? He's gonna make me feel a certain way. Him that the I'm not chibi doki, but Lizard Man had been craving for cheese. After the Goblin Slayer gives them some cheese, the elven girl waits behind and asks the Goblin oh, Slayer whoa. if he would like to join them in their upcoming adventures, and she is excited when he tells them that he'll think about it. Let's Later go. on, some rookie adventurers are seen going the Ray Goblin Slayer on a quest to kill unusually large mice. They succeed in killing them, but the boy loses his sword as they flee what from giant cockroaches who mouse. rush to the spot to eat the remains of Oh the my god, is that the new V Shoujo rat. VTuber? The boy tries getting a sword or another weapon from other adventurers in a bid to get his weapon, but he is unable to find someone who can lend him. That's the boy right. walks up to the Goblin Slayer and asks for his advice, and the Goblin Slayer advises him to use a club, because it was just as effective as a sword. The adventurers return to the cave- Because, <laughs> very pragmatic fellow, this the Goblin Slayer dude in search of the sword, and they succeed in killing two other rats with a club, a tire chased by a group of roaches. The boy realizes that his sword is within the largest roach, and he finally manages to defeat it and retrieve his sword. Meanwhile, the goblin slayers are seen supervising the promotion yeah. exam for rookies. One of the rookies is demoted Cause, because- Because again, you have to remember exactly what this dude cares about. Exactly what he cares about. He just cares about these people surviving and people not being ravaged by goblins in the future. It's- it's touching in a very dark and sad way. Because he stole treasure for himself, but he takes it wrongly and attempts to kill the guild attendant. However, oh, the sucks. goblin slayer rises to her rescue and puts the rookie in his shoes before Man choosing. is ready for anything! It's like, it's so funny, because the goblins, they're not physically strong. They're just crafty little fuckers. And when you deal with them enough, you are ready for anything! Him off. After the promotion exam ends, the goblin slayer walks out while the guild attendant's friend teases her about having an obvious crush for the goblin slayer. Not too long after, a message arrives for the Goblin Slayer and the guild attendant is surprised to see that- I guess being an edgelord works. I guess you could pull if you're an edgelord, what can I say? The sword maiden who happened to be Archbishop had sent a message asking for the Goblin Slayer. Later on, the demon lord is seen talking to a lady who tapped it when a hero arrives with two other members of her party. She launches an attack on him and succeeds in killing him and the next day, Let's the news go. of her deeds spread through the guild like wildfire. People celebrate the news Let's of the go! death of the demon lord the following day, but the goblin slayer remains unmoved by the joke. He doesn't care. He does not care. Yes, the demon lord's dead, and there are more goblins to kill. Revelations One and simply line. informs the priestess and the odd party that he had just received a quest to kill some goblins. He asks them if they're interested in joining him, and they all agree to do this, but the elven girl and the priestess force him into making a promise that he'll never use explosives or fire or poison to kill the goblins. That is such a beta cuck mentality. Holy shit. You want him gone dead. You want to do it with the least casualties possible. You see what these assholes do. Ain't no way, bro. Ain't no way you're going to make him not use his most effective techniques because it's inhumane. Inhumane? You know what's inhumane? What those goblins are doing to people. That's inhumane. Don't you tell this man how to do his job. God, these... These bleeding heart liberals. <laughs> I'm sorry, I just <laughs> I had to do it. The party leaves for the capital, and the priestess and the odd party are surprised to discover that their client is the sword maiden, the archbishop of the capital, and one of the top women. Am I right, guys? They just care about about other people. Oh, imagine being so cringe and and feminine that you actually don't want to make the enemy suffer. Oh God, so cringe. Oh ranked adventurers who had succeeded in killing the demon lord before his reincarnation. We soon discover that Let's she had go. become a legend among the people and the priestess is shy to meet her. 
When they finally arrive so at the temple, too. the swords maiden greets them warmly, and she tells. Oh, I know her from the hentai. I mean, I, I from the the anime. I remember when I watched this, and I watched the show, and she was a prominent character. Yeah. Some of how the dead body of young girls and women were being found in the sure. streets. She reveals that one of the city scouts had seen a dark figure attacking a little girl a and had figure. killed it only to discover racist. that it was a goblin. She then asks oh for their God. help in killing the threats and assures them that she'll provide each of them with a bag of gold after they succeed in doing this quest. Gold. She tells them that the goblins are located within the canals under the temple and gives them an old map of the canal. I didn't get to finish it and my stream crashed. So, being that the stream is alive right now, we are going to continue. This is the second half of the first season of Gubudin Sudeya. We are taking- What the fuck? What happened to her face? What happened to her face? Why is her eyes? What is going on? Decide to investigate the noise, but on getting there, they run into an army of goblins. They run in the opposite Good direction, means. but they en encounter an alligator. The goblin slayer no, suggests that they run in the direction not of an alligator. the goblins, and he pulls them away from sight. After exposing the goblins to the ravenous alligator, he then asks the pre- Man is killing goblins with an alligator. What a legend. She says to shine light on the stream and she does this. The alligator takes advantage of the light and gobbles up the green little goblins without letting a single one escape. Oh, As they oh, walk oh. toward the entrance of the canal- Dude, man just loves killing goblins. Could we just take a moment to respect how much he just loves killing goblins? Like, dude. The goblin slayer remarks on how he was incredibly sure that these goblins were produced unnaturally because they oh. had used boats despite being cowards who would have never used boats on the drainage canal if they knew of the alligator. See, that's what I love about Goblin Slayer. It's just the level of meticulousness. Just just the amount this man... The, the attention to detail, even though goblins are just fucking little degenerate shitbags. Man just is so consistently passionate about murdering those green little fuckers. He further reveals that although their search was cut short by the alligator, something intelligent and definitely mobilized the goblins and he planned on returning to the canals to kill it. After they left the canal, the priestess asked the others if they would like to join her in taking a bath, but they, while giving her the excuse mm. that they're not too fond of baths, but the goblin slayer reveals that he has an errand to run. While the priestess enjoys a bath in the temple, she is surprised. Let's go! Dude, can we take. Goblin Slayer is a show about genocide, murder, sexual assault, rape, harassment, death, and we have a bath scene. We have a bat! See, this is why Goblin Slayer is underrated, ladies and gentlemen. Eyes when the Swords Maiden joins her. The Swords Maiden warns her. Swords Maiden! Dude, Swords Maiden Rule 34 is kind of peak in Goblin Slayer. It's no high elf archer, but it is pretty peak. I'm just saying. Not that I would know, because I've never seen porn before. Then Twitter can attest to the fact that I've never seen porn. That their party might not last forever, and the Goblin Slayer might be killed in one of his quests for goblins. And Wait a second. She comes in to have this cute naked bath moment and be like, oh, you know, your boyfriend, the goblin slayer, he might be killed right now. Teehee, anyway, my titties are here. What a legend, what a legend. And the priestess worries about him. She asks if there's anything yeah! she can do to prevent this, but she realizes that even if death doesn't- I can't believe he would ruin this anime recap by censoring the sword lady. Stop him, he'll eventually for get shame. to a point where he can't hunt down goblins anymore. However, this makes her from develop second thoughts for this quest. She notices a scar on the priestess's back and yeah. realizes that Swords Maiden knows what it's like to be captured by a goblin. The next day- Oh, God. Dude, I love how um in this show, they, they really take the time to show you the trauma experienced by these little green fuckers. Like, normally they're just the little, you know, they're the little losers, right? The, the weaky villains that aren't really paid attention to. You know, the focus is always on the demon lords and the, the demon generals and the freaking big guys. And Goblin Slayer is really just about the torment of these, these little guys that just want to destroy. And you see the scars, the physical and emotional scars that are left on society by these little green rats. They leave for the hideout as the Swords Maiden stares at them hesitantly. They decide to investigate the hideout. The Swords Maiden stares at them hesitantly while wearing a blindfold. <laughs> she stares so hesitantly. Hideout, but they're surprised to see that the canal is silent. As they walk further into the canal, they noticed a room that was unlocked and decided to inspect it. But they're surprised when they're locked within the room. No Poison way, it was a trap! The giant unlocked door in the middle of the sewers was a trap? Ain't no way! He into the room and they realize that they've been trapped, but the goblin slayer instructs his companions to cover their nose to prevent themselves from being poisoned. 
After the poisonous gas had subsided, the goblins rush into the room while some shoot at them, but the priestess protects them with her magical shield. Right, cool. Unfortunately, the shield wears off eventually, and the goblins overpower the goblin slayer and his companions. Oh, the goblins God. part way for their Dude, lord. Look at that blood! Holy crap! It's just freaking everywhere! Flings the goblin slayer against the wall before turning his attention to the odd party. The elven girl is pinned against the floor. No! No! I did not want to see this again! I forgot this happened! No! Well, the goblins toy with her, and the goblin lord picks her up and bites her arm. The goblin slay- Bro, it's just- uh, Dude, the show- The show reminds you that goblins, while they are not inherently a threat, they are just in positions where they're, they will destroy you if they get the chance. And if they're in a position where someone with intelligence leads them or someone with intelligence will use them as the muscle, it's so, suddenly it becomes all too real that these creatures are just brutal monsters. Player notices this through half-closed lids and a bloody head, and he recalls how helpless he had felt after his sister died. He suddenly I also, rises- I love those dice, like the, the symbolism behind the dice, right? Like on the one hand, it symbolizes, uh, you know, the D&D &D campaign, right? Lids and a Which blood is cute, but on the other hand, it's also symbolizing the fact that you're surviving any situation really is a roll of the dice. Like ultimately, you could be meticulous and you could plan for anything, but you don't know exactly what you're up against. You don't you don't know if this if this mission will be your last, and um, it's it's like it's horrifying. Suddenly, these dice aren't just a cool mechanic in order to make the game more interesting. Suddenly, these dice are literally your fates. Bloody head, and he recalls how helpless he had felt after his sister died. He suddenly rises to his feet and launches an attack on the goblin lord from behind before stabbing him in the eyes. The goblin Let's lord go. holds his eyes in pain before stumbling to his feet. The goblins are stunned at the fact that their lord had been brought down by a human and they lose their balance for a minute. The odd party take advantage of this moment and turn the tides in their favor. Dude, goblin slayers just so And they so lose menacing. their balance for a minute. The and it's like, when you see just how vile these goblins actually are, dude, this guy, bro, is just, it's like a... It's almost like such a just character. God party take advantage of this moment and turn the tides in their favor, and the remaining goblins scurry away in fear for their lives after seeing that their boss has been defeated. The goblin slayer walks over to the priestess to ascertain if she's doing okay, and after confirming that she's all right, he suddenly crashes in a heap beside her, but the odd party, who were now exhausted Bruh. and battered from the battle, also join them. Later- Dude, what a crazy fight. Actually insane. That reminds me of the Ranger's Apprentice. Yeah, I love the Ranger's Apprentice. Great series. Later on, the Goblin Slayer wakes up naked and sees the Priestess sleeping naked beside him. He realizes... And then it just brings you back to reality. Because this is an anime. Don't forget. You might think that this is not an anime anymore, but it is! Random naked women everywhere! It's for healing purposes! This is that he had been brought back to life using the magical power of resurrection that involved him sleeping naked with a virgin. The I love that magic power. It is so helpful. Also, why why are we like, dude, what are these clothes? Swords Maiden enters the room at that moment and tells the goblin slayer how she had been raped by goblins ten years ago. Oh, she God. further reveals that others would probably make fun of her if they discovered that the archbishop and the swords maiden who people had sang praises of was scared of ordinary Dude, why did they feel the need to do this? <laughs> I don't understand why they needed to. I mean, I respect it, but I don't understand it. Goblins. She asks the goblin slayer if she can trust him to help her, and she leaves right before the priestess wakes up. The priestess is stunned and embarrassed to see that the goblin slayer had woken up before her, and she asks if he had seen anything, but it doesn't calm her jitters no, and reveals that she not. had no scars. After they had finished dressing up, the odd party- Dude, I remember uh, Twitter was trying to cancel Goblin Slayer for the first scene, like the whole sexual assault scene in the first episode, and then they tried to cancel this again because I think the priestess is, like, young. But, uh, dude, <laughs> yeah, it's a very different world, I guess. Not defending anything here. I feel like there, there was no reason to not make her 18. But at the same time, dude was dead, okay? Like- they tried to resurrect this man from the dead. Shout out to the fucking him, I guess. I he barges into the room and the elven girl- tried to pull a sniper wolf going on Omegle to talk to 15 year olds. Tells the goblin slayer how the priestess had cried after he didn't wake up the previous day. The dwarf and the lizard men ah! further reveal that they had not- I love how this 
this group kind of became friends, you know? It's like they, they become friends in this really terrifying world, in this ravaged world surrounded by danger and creatures that want to destroy and break you. And and they, they get together and they form bonds through their trauma. It's it's beautiful in a tragic way. And I feel like people forget that about Goblin Slayer. People forget Goblin Slayer is actually kind of, kind of great. Eaten the thing since the incidents as they had been waiting for him just so they could share their first meal together after they Aww. finish eating the goblin slayer and the priestess leave for the blacksmith where they drop off their armor for repairs the next day the goblin slayer the priestess and the odd party leave for the canal Let's to kill go. the remainder of the goblins but they discover a large eye that can shoot fire and nullify spells I the goblin that. slayer instructs the dwarf to put it to sleep and trap it inside after he throws a bag of gas at it the Who eye thinks he's the godskin duo is catch fire and it dies alongside the goblins within the room after they walk wait didn't they tell him you're not allowed to use fire deeper into the room they re they killed the beholder yeah beholder out here Asshole. Realize that the eyeball has been protecting a mirror, but they're unable to see their reflections. So the goblin slayer instructs the priestess to use her powers on it. After the priestess uses her powers on the mirror, they see the shapes of goblins on the other okay. side of the mirror who are busy preparing their boats to come to the canal. The goblin slayer realizes that what? the goblins were probably using this mirror for some elaborate scheme, but he also realizes that if the mirror was being used by the goblins, they were definitely still within the canal. Just then, a Dude, horde... I do not remember this piece of the, the story. It's been so long. Holy crap, it has been so long since I've seen this show. I didn't even remember this arc. But yeah, I do love that he, you know, he thinks it through. He said, by the fact that this mirror is still here and the goblins didn't evacuate it, it means the goblins are still here. Goblins rush Logic toward them sound. and they're joined by the goblin lord who attacks the goblin slayer with pent up anger from their previous match. He's not the only one pent up after I see the sword woman dressed like she did in the last episode. Goblin Slayer discovers that the mirror can absorb all objects, so he instructs Lizardmen to dislodge it and carry it alongside the dwarf. He vexes the Goblin Lord Let's and go. urges him in the direction of the mirror before allowing it to crash land on it. The Priestess and the Dwarf combine their forces and succeed in killing all the goblins oh, in the room. Oh, the Dwarf feels so superior right now. Towering over the goblin goblins in height. While using the mirror as a diversion. After they're done, the goblin slayer asks the dwarf to coat the mirror in concrete and sink it in a river to prevent others from using the mirror for eel quests. He later returns to the swords maiden and yeah. tells her of his suspicions that she's somehow involved in all the crimes that had been occurring in the city. Yeah. The swords maiden admits that goblins could never kill their prey instantly, and they prefer to them to their hideout and toy with them for a little while before killing them. Bruh. Dude, it's like, can you even feel bad for her for being an evil bitch sometimes? It's like, w the things she went through, no human should ever have to even conceive of going through. She reveals that she had taken up the role of a goblin to make the villagers understand how horrible it was to be raped by goblins. I, like, I get it. It's, it's a relatively interesting... This movie happens in between seasons? Yeah, I know. But it's a relatively interesting ideology, I guess, for, like, a villain... I know that the, the logic is horrible, but it's like a PR move. Like, she wants goblins to be eradicated and murdered, and people don't really take goblins seriously. So she had to be evil to show you evil so that you can really gobble those nuts, if you will. Uh, like, it's an actual, it's an ideology I respect in a villain. It's not like stupid villains with bad motives. I'm working on a video talking about terrible villains with terrible ideologies. I would not include this. Like, this is a character that has been so fundamentally broken and wants people to understand the pain she went through, so no one else needs to understand that pain. And she's willing to do something abhorrent and evil to do it. She asks the Goblin Slayer what he plans to do with her, but it tells her that he plans on doing nothing to her because he understood that she was in pain. He tells her that he'll help her kill goblins whenever she needs, and he'll come running even if the goblins appear in her dreams. She became a devil to defeat the Dude has so much riz, it's coming out of his helmet. Later on, Goblin Slayer returns to the guild with his friends, and he tells them of his plan to make ice treats, a dessert that he had not tasted since his sister died. The Goblin Slayer yeah. steps into the kitchen and sees the farm girl cooking. Dude, she's just out there every day, boobs on sill, ready and waiting. She asks him if he cares for the breakfast. The riz overfloweth! And he agrees to this. He reminisces on how his childhood friend had told him that she was going to the city and how he had flared up out of envy. After she left, his sister had asked him if it was because he felt envious of his friend that he had gotten angry. He also recalls how his sister had asked him to stop feeling envious of others because people who felt envious of others were like goblins. 
She asked yeah, him yeah. to apologize to his friend when she returned, and he recalls how his sister had cooked his favorite dish of chicken soup and milk while he had greedily consumed bowl after bowl. Very the next close. day, the goblin slayer wakes up and steps out to do his usual routine check, and the farm girl calls out to him as she's stunned to aid him walking about without his helmet. She invites him to join her and Dude her uncle. Dude is starting to feel more comfortable with himself. He's making friends. He's having allies. It's so cute, bro. It's so cute. <sighs> for breakfast and the goblin slayer agrees her invite and joins them for breakfast inside however her father shares the same reaction that she did after realizing that the goblin slayer has taken off his helmet he wonders if the goblin slayer had finally given up on goblin slaying and asks if he's you still fool. planning on visiting the guild even though the demon lord was dead but the goblin giving up on goblin slaying is like nux taku giving up on erections it's impossible slayer tells him that goblins were still running about freely he's he not freaking rudius from mushoku tensei season two Asked if he had seen anything unusual, and the Goblin Slayer tells him that he had not noticed anything unusual. Before the Goblin Slayer leaves for the guild, a farm burl offers to follow him. While the Goblin Slayer loads a few supplies into the carriage, the farm burl's uncle approaches him and asks him to be careful with his niece. Upon their arrival at the guy, the farm girl leaves the niece. Goblin Slayer to get some errands. And then a hentai begins. Errands done, but people fail to recognize the Goblin Slayer, and some adventurers even treat him nicely or unaware of who he is. The Goblin Slayer <laughs> because makes Because he was just so terrifying. Man was just an obsessive, compulsive nutcase with the armor on. Up the blacksmith's shop before picking up his armor. He notices an adventurer training a group of rookies, and he steps into the guild wow, where he meets the young nicely. priestess who tells him that her arm had now fully recovered. They are joined by the guild assistant. I guess she slept with a virgin. I guess that was, that was the only way. It's like, she's out here sleeping with virgins like a mad lad. Who tells him that he has a letter from the swords maiden, but the young priestess wonders why the swords maiden had written to him. The goblin slayer of Why would the swords maiden write to you? And then the Netorare arc begins. Eventually discovers that the swords maiden had written to tell him that her nightmares about goblins had finally stopped and things were going pretty oh, smoothly in the capital. Is. The odd party walked toward them at that moment and asked why the goblin slayer had not stopped by to see them if he was in the area and they try convincing him Because you're not goblins and I have no interest in you But goblin slayer, I can treat you a way that goblins can't make you feel I highly doubt that To eat with them But the goblin slayer refuses while saying he's got some business The farm girl walks in at that moment and the group is surprised to see her The elven girl is dis- Oh, goblin slayer getting a harem, that's awesome Disappointed to find out that the goblin slayer had plans with the farm girl and that was why he had initially refused for invitation. The group extends an He has a date? What? The Goblin Slayer can get it up for something that isn't killing goblins? Bro can get it up for something that literally isn't genocide? Invite to the farm girl and she joins them on their table. Later that evening, the dwarf and the elven girl indulge in a drinking bag to see who would get drunk first and- Dude, I love these games because she has no chance! And she's so cute when she's so cute. The audience at the guild cheers them on as they drink deeper into the night. Later on, the farm girl is seen preparing breakfast in a joyous mood when the goblin slayer suddenly walks up to her. And she's saying, Goblin slayer, don't worry. I can also gobble these nuts. Her and tells her to run away as fast as possibly. The farm girl is stunned by this and she uh -oh. asks why Hwaz was asking her to leave, uh -oh. but the goblin slayer reveals that uh -oh. he had seen goblin footprints in the wood and judging by the number of footprints on the forest grounds, the number of goblin scouts were probably running into hundreds and it was probably the army of the goblin king. Ladies and gentlemen, the epic foreshadowing of checking the outskirts of the town every single day has finally paid off and tragedy will ensue. I just love the darkness of this world. Goblin Slayer is underrated. He also reveals that they probably had a shaman and numerous lords, and he could not handle them on his own, but the farm girl refuses to leave. The Why? farm girl tells him that she- Leave! No, it's not worth it, lady, please! Trusts him, and she wouldn't leave because she knew he would stay behind. The Goblin Slayer tries warning her off it by telling her the- Dude, you are not helpful here. Leave, please, please, please. No, I remember this. I was so frustrated when I saw this. Do you think it'll make him feel better? If he knows that 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 if he fails, you're about, you're gonna get raped, bro. Do you think it'll make him feel that much better? Gory details of what had happened to the previous women who had been captured by the goblins, but the farm girl insists on staying behind and stares at him wistfully before reaching for his face. But the goblin slayer stops her and heads out. The farm girl's uncle noticed. No, you think just because you're staying behind for me, I'm gonna let you touch my face? Unforgivable. This is the saddened state of his niece and tells the goblin slayer not to make his niece sad. The Goblin Slayer walks toward the guild and announces that Dude, he- I, pr I preferred the, uh, the Dojin, uh, Goblin Lair, the man that laid so many goblins- All right, He has okay. a favored ask. 
People are stunned by this as the Goblin Slayer rarely ever fights alongside others. The Goblin Slayer tells them an army of goblins are planning on attacking a forest at the outskirts of the village where he was currently living and he would need their help to defeat them. The adventurers initially refuse to help him and the elven girl jumps to her feet in anger, but she yeah! holds herself back from having an outburst. One of the adventurers demands- Shout out to the high elf lady. By far the best cat. Everyone out here saying swordswoman, y'all don't know what makes a waifu a waifu. It's not about the size of the boob. ...and for a form of payment and ye goblin slayer promises the adventurers that he'll give them whatever they want, even going so far as to list his personal belongings. The adventurers offer to kill the goblins for him, but they tell him that he'll buy them a drink as payment. The guild attendant realizes that the goblin slayer is in Aww. need of help, so she offers a gold coin to anyone who kills Aww. goblins. Dude, that's why Riz is helpful. It's not about getting women. It's because Riz can make you an army. Because they can control the minds of others. Let's go, guild girl! You've been underestimated in every single isekai anime thus far. But now your reign of terror begins, guild girl! Adventurers are fueled by the prospects of extra money, and they prepare for the night's battle. <laughs> the prospect of extra money. Battle with renewed vigor. Bem and later that night, they lay hidden and wait for the goblins. The goblin king sends a signal to the goblins and asks them to leave for the farmhouse, and the goblins run towards the house gleefully, but they're attacked by a wall of spears and a torrent of arrows. The adventurers kill the offensive Let's green beings go. mercilessly, but some of the goblins realize that they had been ambushed, and they try to escape. I love how some of them realized. It's like, it's just some of them noticed, oh my god, they expected this somehow. <laughs> some of them. Most of them, when they saw the arrows, they're like, mm, yes, arrows, just yeah, probably not an ambush. But a group of rookie adventurers notice them and kill them. After they had finished killing all the young goblins, a female adventurer remarks on how the goblins- Bro, why are you censoring it, man? You're killing the anime! And Slayer truly deserved his silver ranking because he had come up with a battle strategy that had made it easier for them to kill the goblins. Another adventurer is seen striking down a goblin in the forest when a goblin lord suddenly appears behind oh him god. and twists him repeatedly- Oh god! ...before flinging him in the direction of the other adventurers. Man just got flung! The other adventurers are alarmed by this as they also hear the heavy footsteps of numerous goblin lords. The goblin lords emerge from behind the forest trees and one of the rookie adventurers asks for the goblin slayer's whereabouts but the elven guru reveals that he had left them to slay some goblins. Meanwhile, the goblin king is seen fleeing for his life but the goblin slayer bitch. arrives at that moment and stops him with Dude, an Dude, I love how meticulous the goblin slayer is. I love how, despite, he is not the strongest character in this show. I I've said this before and I'll say it again. This man is not the strongest character in the show. He is far from the strongest character in the show. He's just dedicated his life to the pursuit of destroying this vile and disgusting... I was going to say this. It's going to sound racist. But, but man knows how to commit genocide the right way. <laughs> and it just makes him the most important fighter on the side of the good guys, even though he's not the strongest. And I love that about him ensemble and helmet that reflects red light. The Goblin King thinks of a way to get back to his best and impregnate his female captives, but he's surprised- You heard correct, by the way. Goblins reproduce by, uh, yeah, all the goblins are male. Let's put it that way. ...as when the Goblin Slayer tells him that his plan wouldn't work because he had already destroyed his nest and rest- Oh, dude, look at this, this art. Dude has the whole sans eye and everything. ...skewed his female captives. The Goblin King launches himself at him in rage and the Goblin Slayer returns his strikes with parries. However, he gets flung across the forest grounds and the Goblin King walks toward him menacingly before stepping on the Goblin Slayer's head repeatedly. Oh! The Goblin King removes his sword and attempts to cut off the head of the Goblin Slayer, but the priestess steps out of the forest at that moment and traps the Goblin King before striking him with lightning. The Goblin King tumbles forward and the priestess heals the Goblin Slayer before chiding him for always Dude, risking his life in battle. So we soon learn that the Goblin Slayer had purposely lure the goblin came to the forest it was all part of the plan because he couldn't handle him alone in the open meanwhile See, i love that i love that they didn't just make him strong enough to be able to beat the goblin king they made him meticulous enough to know exactly how to defeat the goblin king man had a pocket healer the other adventurers are attacked by one of the goblin lords but a young goblin tries to kill from behind however the female partner of the veteran soldier rescues him the battle ends as they succeed in killing the goblins and the hero who had defeated the demon lord arrives in town she discusses with her party about how she had recently heard the goblins had attacked their village, but they had been defeated by a man known as the Goblin Slayer. Yeah, because even though she is by far the most powerful character introduced on the good guy's side, she was not there for this. Yes, she won the big battle for humanity by fighting the Demon King, but that's really not what it's all about. Yes, the big battle is very important, but 
sometimes, ultimately, it's the many little battles that can cause the most havoc. Tells the other members of her party that she has to meet the warrior who killed them, and one of them suggests that killing goblins is a task for rookies. However, the hero informs her that goblins are despicable creatures that are hard to kill. The entire town celebrates the death of the goblin, and the farm Let's girl go. welcomes the goblin slayer after he arrives from his battle with the goblin king. Later on, the goblin slayer returns to the guild, and he is warmly greeted by the adventurers. He tells the priestess of his plans to become an adventurer and take up more quests, and she asks him why he didn't put up a quest earlier. Very but the old. goblin slayer tells her that the last time something like that had occurred in his village, the adventurers had refused to help, saying goblins were small fry, and she tells him that she'd like to ask for a favor. The priestess asks the goblin slayer if he can take off his mask, and he pulls off his helmet to reveal a strikingly handsome face. Wait, the crowd she gathers saw him already! Why does this man have to riz up the entire bar? Who does he think he is, Oompaville? God, he doesn't even have a mustache! ...over to their side to stare at his face as they're surprised that they've never gotten to see his face. This is just Kakashi episode thousand billion all over again. The priestess... Under my helmet is another helmet! ...smiles as everyone gathers around them as she realizes that everyone at the guild had always considered him as family, and they would surely attend to his request whenever he makes one because they all genuinely cared for him. The it's beautiful. It's a really beautiful story, honestly. They, they are a family. In this crazy godforsaken world with gods rolling dice for the fate of every character. And uh, it just makes me sad seeing Twitter people shit on it just because it has dark themes. Dude, lots of shows have dark themes. But suck my uh, slimy cock, Twitter fam. Like, subscribe, and follow me on Twitch. Stay weird, fam.